insane history facts that school refuses to teach you that I found on the internet because school refuses to teach you. So long ago, the thought process was, okay, Jesus was a Jew, which means that he had to be circumcised, which means that his foreskin is still out there somewhere, thus starting the quest for Jesus's foreskin. And there are actually several European churches that claim they have it in their possession. Hitler's original plan for the Jews was to deport them all to Madagascar, and when that failed for obvious reasons, his backup plan was genocide. The last American Civil War widow's pension wasn't paid off until 2003. And also, there was once a Confederate soldier who went into a veterans hospital in the 50s and he was denied treatment because he wasn't a United States veteran. Insane history facts that school refuses to teach you. You know about the wheel, the invention that was a pivotal moment in the evolution of human history? Yeah. The dildo was invented 25,000 years earlier. In the late 1800s, writers were complaining that the youth were losing touch with reality because instead of sitting at the dinner table with their families, they were reading too many magazines. Julius Caesar was once kidnapped by pirates and when he found out how much they were asking for ransom, he got offended because it was too low and he told them to raise it. He also annoyed the fuck out of them because he was holding poetry readings, told them to keep it down because he was trying to sleep and just like generally being a pompous dick. Insane history facts that school refuses to teach you. During World War I, prostitutes were worth more if they had an STD because if the soldier who hired them got infected, he got honorably discharged and didn't have to fight in the war. The first thing ever said to the pilgrims by the Native Americans, specifically Samoset, was do you have any beer in perfect English? Benjamin Franklin, that dude on the $100 bill, had a string of pearls that was several feet long and he would add a new pearl every time he slept with a new woman. Insane history facts that school has refused to teach you. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the entire world because Russia wasn't able to cover their cost with vodka. So instead they traded a destroyer, a cruiser, a frigate, and 17 submarines. In ancient Egypt, they covered their servants with honey to attract the flies away from the pharaohs. So Newton and Leibniz, the two dudes that invented calculus, were lifelong virgins, never had sex, and they were very proud of that fact. Insane history facts that school just refused to teach you. Sigmund Freud, you know about this dude if you've ever taken a psychology class. He loved cocaine, like he fucking loved cocaine. He had a friend that had a morphine addiction. He's like, you know what? I can cure you. Here, take some cocaine. It didn't work. Alexander the Great had 361 official prostitutes just on call for him at any time. Four more and he would have one for every day of the year, but he thought that would be a little excessive. So the Welsh would often go into England and steal sheep, but this was punishable by death. So if they were ever caught, they said, no, I'm not here to steal the sheep. I'm here to fuck the sheep, which was not punishable by death. Insane history facts that school refuses to teach you. During the prohibition, the government started getting really frustrated that people were still drinking alcohol even though that it was banned. So they decided to poison it. They literally poisoned the alcohol and it killed over 10,000 people. And y'all wonder why I don't trust the government. The only reason the vibrator was ever invented was because doctors were getting carpal tunnel from using their fingers to treat their lady patients for their hysteria. Pope Gregory IX declared that cats were associated with devil worshipping and that they all needed to be exterminated. And many believe that this big disappearance of cats actually led to all the rats being able to spread the bubonic plague in the 1300s that killed millions of people. Fuck Greg, cats are cool. Things that are way older than you probably expected. Well, the rings around Saturn are estimated to be between 10 and 100 million years old. But sharks are about 450 million years old. That means that sharks as a species is older than shit in space. Space! The electric car was invented in 1884, a year before the gas car. But the 1920s, we started building better roads, so people started driving further than the electric car could, and we discovered a bunch of big oil reserves, so gas cars just took over. Oreos were invented in 1912. Not too crazy to think about on its own, but sliced bread was invented in 1928, and chocolate chip cookies didn't come out till the 1930s. Things that are way newer than you probably expected. The idea that Republican states are red and Democrat states are blue really only started in the year 2000. Before that, it was more random and the more liberal person usually got red. 
A high five was invented in 1977 by a gay baseball player who was uncomfortable with ass slaps. George Washington grew up in a world without knowing that dinosaurs ever existed, and the commonly accepted theory that dinosaurs were killed off by a meteor didn't get first theorized until 1980. You can actually go back and watch Disney's Fantasia, which came out in the 40s, and they show the dinosaurs being killed off by earthquakes. Robert didn't like this one singer so much that he wrote her a piece with a lot of high notes and low notes constantly, because he noticed whenever she did low notes, her chin would go to her chest, and when she did high notes, her head would fly up, and so when she sang this piece, her head was just bobbing like a chicken. Eric the Red wanted people to live on his newfound ice-covered land, so he named it Greenland. April 1st, 1957, a British newscaster told his audience that the Italians had like a huge spaghetti harvest that year. And then they cut cameras and showed people like picking spaghetti off of trees and bushes. And apparently the British didn't know shit about spaghetti at this time because a lot of people called in asking how they can grow their own spaghetti trees. The men in the 60s used the word swag to identify each other as the acronym meant secretly we are gay. Psychopaths tend to overuse the words uh and um to try and appear normal in conversations. Beatles concerts were said to smell heavily of urine because of all the overexcited girls. I wondered what your country leads the world in, like what you guys do the best. Well, I did, so. Switzerland was ranked the number one best country in the entire world, and it's probably because they have the highest employment rate. Canada is the number two best country in the world, and you guys lead in maple syrup and asteroid impacts. Number three is Japan, and you guys have the most robots. Germany in that number four spot has almost won the World Cup the most times. Australia coming in with that number five. You guys lead the world in deadliest animals and melanoma. The UK, hello. You're number six, and uh, you, you lead the world in fascist movements. And finally, it might surprise some of my viewers that the United States is not number one. Uh, we're, we're number seven but we do lead the world in nobel prize winners eating hot dogs and getting killed by lawnmowers so i'm very curious to know where you're from in the u.s what state if not where the fuck are you from easter religious holiday easter egg hunt how the fuck how did we get that okay so since ancient times rabbits have always been seen as magical creatures due to their elusive behavior especially at night people even thought that they had something to do with the moon cycle and you know what else they thought had something to do with the moon cycle women's periods. So because of that and the fact that bunnies pull ass like no other, they were seen as a symbol of fertility. Eggs are also seen as a symbol of fertility. Over the years, humans connected these things to the Virgin Mary, somebody who was so fertile that she had a kid as a virgin. This can be seen in a lot of Northern European Christian art. Orthodox Christians also took part in Lent, where they don't eat for a while, but the day before Easter, they would eat a bunch of multicolored eggs. The first known reference to an Easter rabbit bringing eggs to children is from 17th century professor George Franken Frankenau in his book, Easter Rabbit. Basically, when German Protestants came to the United States in the 18th century, they brought this idea with them and just spread it around. So now we have Jesus and the Easter Bunny. You're welcome. <laughs> Dogs have changed a lot in the past hundred years. Just look at the wiener dog, okay? Their legs have gotten shorter and they've gotten way longer. Or even a hound dog, okay? They've gotten much smaller, but their ears have gotten so much bigger. I don't even know what happened to the poodle. And just look what we did to the poor pugs, man, okay? Their eyes have gotten bigger and their faces have gotten flatter, which means they have a lot more health problems than they did 100 years ago. But I have a great day. About 100 years ago, they could get up to about 120 pounds. Today, they get up to about 175. Let me know if you guys want a part two. Insane history facts that school just didn't teach you. In 17th century Europe, it was very common for nannies to give young and teenage boys of the house handies to help them sleep at night. We used to have a plant called Silphium that was an extremely effective birth control. Unfortunately, the ancient Romans just had way too much sex and the plant went extinct. Tampons were first invented in the 18th century to help stop the bleeding from bullet wounds. And they were like, okay, to help with the pain, let's put a little bit of our general anesthetic on the tampon. Except it was cocaine! They made cocaine tampons! And by the time women started using tampons, you know, for their periods, they kept the cocaine. They're like, yeah, it helps with period cramps. But like, why don't we have this anymore? Like, logically, I know why we don't, but as a person who experiences period cramps, bring it back! Insane history facts that school just refused to teach you. 
During times of war, humans have been known to take their weapons and stick them in shit. That way, if they stab anybody with it, it inflicts that extra poison damage. The famous poet Edgar Allan Poe was 27 years old when he dove deep into alcoholism, lost his job, and decided that the next course of action for his life would be to marry Virginia Eliza Clem, his 13-year-old cousin. She died about 10 years later from tuberculosis. Toulouse-Lautrec is a very famous painter from the late 1800s who apparently had a giant penis. But because he was only about 5 feet tall, the prostitutes that he hung around called him Teapot because he's short and stout. In the past 2,000 years, a lot of men have claimed that they were Jesus Christ. Like there's a whole giant list of names on Wikipedia of these men. And even though most of them were diagnosed paranoid schizophrenics, a lot of them were able to find people that believed them and they gained this cult following. Super weird, but kind of interesting how far people were willing to take their faith. And in the 1950s, a psychiatrist took three of these men who all believed that they were the son of God and he put them in a room together to try and see if their beliefs would change when confronted with the person who was just as dead set on being the second coming as they were. You wanna try and guess what happened? Their beliefs didn't change at all. Instead, each of them came to the conclusion that the other two men were insane. Try to remember this story next time you think you're right about something. Humans are really good at hurting other humans, so here are some interesting ways that we did that. This fun little device is known as the wooden horse, a triangular piece of wood usually with spikes on top. They would make the victim sit on it like a horse and then slowly add weight to their feet. And they would do this until the person was eventually ripped in half, crotch first. Grounding is when they bury a person's whole body up to their head, and after this a few different things can happen. Sometimes they would just throw stones at your head until you died, other times they would pour sugar water on it to attract flies to lay eggs inside of you. And then other times they would bury people at the beach during low tide that way when the water came back in they would drown but by far the scariest method has got to be tickle torture this is when they would tie a person to a chair and then force them to soak their feet in salt water for about 24 hours and then after that they would pull the chair back so their feet are up in the air and then they would bring a goat in to lick the salt soaked feet and the goat doesn't stop licking. It'll lick past your skin, your flesh, right down to your bone. But the worst part is that there's nobody else in the room to plead to or bargain with. Just you and a goat that really likes salt. Insane history facts that school couldn't teach you. In ancient Greece, a big dick was actually seen as inferior because people took it as a sign that the man attached to it was stupid. This is why a lot of their statues depict men with tiny little wieners because it was a sign of intelligence. Pyrene was a woman in ancient Greece who was put on trial for not being the most holy or like godly person. But she ended up avoiding a death sentence because she flashed her boobs in court. The all male jury saw her titties and decided that it would be a crime against the gods to kill somebody so beautiful. The ancient Greeks, Romans, and Spartans were very into anal. And like, everybody has a butthole, so everybody was into it. Women would do it because in order to get married, they just had to be vaginal virgins. Talk about a loophole. And men would do it with other soldiers as a sign of like friendship and camaraderie and brotherhood. Some insane history facts that I don't think school even considered teaching you. In the year 2000, an art show in Denmark showed off 10 fully functional blenders with a live goldfish inside each one. Visitors were given the option to press the on button with the idea that nobody would actually do it. Until somebody did. They pushed that button and blended two goldfish. Just out in the open! In 2011, an Australian bartender found a glitch in his bank's ATM system. And it allowed him to withdraw more money than he actually had the balance for. And for four months, this guy went on a bender of parties, private jets, and paying off his friend's student loans. He spent $1.6 million before being caught. Burger King once ran a promotion called the Whopper Sacrifice, where they would give anybody a free Whopper as long as they deleted 10 friends off Facebook. It was a huge success until Facebook shut it down because so many people were complaining about the fact that they got deleted for a sandwich. I just started my period and it got me thinking, how the hell did women of the past deal with this? Because they didn't have pads or tampons or mydol or menstruation crustaceans. Like, how did they do it? So I did some digging and it turns out a lot of ancient cultures just tried to use paper to absorb the blood. It was the ancient Greeks that took a small piece of wood, covered it in lint, and used that to plug it up. 
It was Native Americans that used a mixture of moss and buffalo skin to make the world's first natural pad. During the medieval times, a lot of women used this makeshift rag underwear, but it wasn't like a disposable thing, you know? Like, you were on the rag, you had your rag. It wasn't until the mid-1800s that the sanitary apron was introduced, which was this rubber sheet that ran in between your legs to stop the blood from getting on your clothes. It was actually World War I nurses that paved the way for the first sanitary napkin. In 1931, tampons were invented, and I thought it was a modern trend, but the menstrual cup was invented in the 1930s. But then questions around virginity started happening, so people leaned more into pads, and in the 60s, they added the adhesive strip. One of my favorite examples of civil disobedience is in 1979, Sweden classified homosexuality as an illness, and in protest, the people of Sweden would call into work saying they couldn't come in today. They were feeling gay. Some really weird ancient games that our ancestors used to play. Not mine, but somebody's. Rich Victorians had this one called Find the Poo. If somebody was designated to take a shit, hide it in like a vase or something, and put that vase somewhere in the house for the rest of the party to find. Classic. Ancient Greek women used to play this game called Lysistrata, where they would collectively withhold sex from men, most notably with powerful men during times of war. And they would do so until peace negotiations would happen. Little game of power where a sex strike literally saved lives. So King Philip V of Spain invented this game called the Imperturbable that became really popular in 18th century France. A bunch of men would sit at a table but be completely naked from the bottom down. A woman would go underneath the table and go down on one of the men. And the object of the game was to guess who was getting off and you won if you could finish without anybody noticing. Egyptians' love for cats is so strong that it actually cost them winning a war. This is because the Persians tied cats to their shields. And there was just no way that they were going to take a sword and fight, essentially, their gods. The American bison is the only animal whose lungs aren't separated. They share one capacity. Which explains why these huge animals were able to be so easily killed with such a small weapon. One arrow to the lung and both would collapse and they would suffocate pretty quickly. Rescue dogs on 9-11 were sent into the wreckage to try and find survivors. But every person that they found was already dead and the dogs were getting like visibly depressed by this thinking that they weren't doing a good job. The handlers noticed this and would go and pretend to hide in the rubble that way when the dog finally found somebody who was alive it would boost the morale a little bit. Food pyramid is a scam. In the late 80s, early 90s, food scientists came together to try and figure out what would be the optimal diet for a human being. But the results were not in line with what the big food corporations wanted to sell us, so they changed the science. Like, they completely changed around the whole idea of what we should be eating. The original recommended five to nine servings of fruit and vegetables a day, but that got changed to just two or three. The original said three to four servings of whole grain, but cereal companies especially changed that to six to 11 servings per day, completely changing out what the foundation of the pyramid looks like. You know when the original dairy wasn't even its own section at all? They added it in there though to make people think that it's necessary for a balanced diet. The original creator of the food pyramid has gone on record saying that it's clear that her design was just sold to the highest better because she does not recognize what it's turned into. And then we sit around and wonder why Americans get so sick. This is Helen Hewlett, a kindergarten teacher who in 1938 was a witness to a burglary, but the judge ended up sentencing her to five days in jail because she wore pants in the courtroom. Hewlett arrived in downtown LA to give her testimony against the two burglary suspects when courtroom drama quickly shifted to the fact that she was wearing slacks. Judge Arthur S. Guerin rescheduled the hearing and ordered Helen to wear a dress next time. She responded by saying, you tell that judge I will stand by my rights. If he orders me to wear a dress, I won't do it. I like my slacks, they're comfortable. And she showed up to court five days later, just like she said she would. The judge once again rescheduled the hearing, ordering Helen to show up in an accepted dress in if she refused, she was going to be prevented from testifying because it was hindering the administration of justice. Helen argued saying that she's worn slacks since she was 15 years old, she doesn't own any dresses besides formal wear, and that she will show up tomorrow wearing slacks even if he does put me in jail because hopefully it'll forever free women from this anti-slackism. Which is exactly what happened. She was sent to jail, forced to wear a denim prison dress, while her lawyer, along with the help of hundreds of letters sent in protest, got the rule changed and she was free to wear slacks in court. And this is the best part because after her appeal was one point was made, she went to court a couple months later wearing a dress on her own terms. Saying history facts that school just 
refuse to teach you. Learn about the continents, you learn about Antarctica. There's this giant place of ice. Well, scientists found out that there's actually a ton of land underneath all that ice. It's hypothesized that 90 million years ago, Antarctica actually used to be a lush rainforest. They're actually planning on drilling through the ice to get down there and see if this is true. People treat pigeons like sky rats nowadays, but for thousands of years, we domesticated these animals until we decided we didn't want them anymore. They used to be our friends. Well, they did teach us about Pompeii, right? This place where a volcano erupted, thousands of people died under the ash, and the remains were left for us to find. What they probably didn't tell you about is all of the graffiti that was left in the city, which is crazy, right? Like, why wouldn't they want to share what our ancient ancestors were trying to tell us? Well, that's because most of the writing after translated was just about sex. Like, take off your clothes, show me your hairy privates, Felix fucks like a god! early versions of inventions that we still use today. Apple's iPhone came out in 2007, and it was not the first smartphone. That title would be handed out a decade earlier to the Simon. Simon might not look like much, but I mean, come on guys, it has a touch screen, and it had all these features which blew people away in the... 90s. In 1964, the first computer mouse was invented. It was made out of wood, had one button, and was able to go up and down, as well as left to right. None of those fancy 360 movements. I honestly want to see somebody try and game on this. You should be thankful for whatever pair of headphones you grew up with, okay? Because if you were around in the 1880s, your headphones would consist of covering one ear and weighing a literal 10 pounds. Let me know if you guys want me to do another one of these. Forks were first invented in 11th century Italy. It worried the religious leaders and was actually considered scandalous because God had already given humans natural forks. When basketball was first invented, the basket was a literal basket, okay? At every game, anytime a player scored a point, there would be somebody who would climb up on a ladder to retrieve the ball. Even when they got net baskets, they still had to go and get it. It took them 20 years to figure out that cutting a hole at the bottom might make the game a little bit more efficient. The Vikings used iron as a main ingredient in all their weapons, but it was a common practice to add animal bones to the mix because they believed that the spirit of the animal would make the weapon stronger. And they were kind of right because the carbon from the bones mixed with the iron ended up making steel. The guy who invented the World Wide Web only did so because he got tired of having to walk over to his coworker's desk, ask him what dad is on his computer, and walk back to his to download it. The bulletproof vest was invented after a pizza delivery guy was working in Detroit and got shot twice. He made it and proved that it worked by shooting himself in the chest in front of police. Cereal was invented as a way to try and get kids to stop touching themselves. The man who made the webcam did so so he could watch his coffee being made from bed. McDonald's created the Super Size as a promotion for the Jurassic Park movie but kept it because our fat asses loved it. One time there was not only a pope and an anti-pope but also a counter anti-pope. The first bomb dropped on Berlin by the British in World War II had no human casualties but it did kill an elephant. The Spartans didn't build a wall around their city, figuring that their reputation alone would stop anybody from trying to attack them. But during the Persian War, the Persians wanted to attack Sparta, so they hired a Greek guide to take them there. But when they got there, they kind of just found this crap-looking city without a wall around it and figured that the Greek guy was lying to them. So. Sparta was spared. The Chinese emperor around the year 200 BC escaped an assassin by running around a pillar for hours. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the world after Russia couldn't afford to pay for its products, so it instead traded 17 submarines, a frigate, a cruiser, and a destroyer in a trade deal. History facts that I can't stop thinking about. The reason pairing salt and pepper is so normalized is because King Louis XIV couldn't handle any other spices and hated overwhelming flavors. According to the schedule of the first moon landing, the astronauts were supposed to sleep for a few hours before getting out and going to explore, but understandably, they couldn't and had to ask to leave a little bit early. In 1988, the man who held the record of 800 skydives went on his third skydive of the day, and he had a camera rig this time, the whole setup, except he forgot his parachute. And in the video, you can actually hear the moment that he realized he messed up. His last words were, oh no, oh God. Thomas Jefferson tried mac and cheese for the first time ever in France in 1802, and he loved it so much that he served it at the state dinner, or, his slaves served it at the state dinner, right? And 
everybody hated it. They called this weird onion pie. Like, why did he make this? United States alcohol consumption in the 1800s was insane. It averaged about 1.7 bottles of whiskey per person per week. Did you guys know that the Super Bowl wasn't always called the Super Bowl? It wasn't until the early 70s that the Kansas City Chiefs owner called the World Championship game the Super Bowl after being inspired by a toy his daughter had called the Super Bowl. He had an accent. Statistically, the team that wears white has an edge. Out of the 57 Super Bowls, 37 of those winners were wearing white jerseys. Also, when teams have to travel for this game, the team that ends up traveling west has a perfect record of winning over the team that travels east. All the players who make it to the Super Bowl get a bonus check no matter what. The winners get $150,000 and the losers get 80 k But the Super Bowl halftime performers don't get paid in anything except an exposure. Kind of weird to think about, but did you know that the goalpost used to be at the front of the end zone? It, it wasn't until like Super Bowl VIII that they moved it to the end line. Super Bowl Sunday is the second biggest feast in America. The amount of calories an average person is gonna eat today is over 8,000.